Yes, nice to meet you again. Sake. Sake. Yeah. <laughs> so how, I, I actually wanted to ask you. Yeah. How were you able to understand the sake so deep like that? Because you were explaining perfectly the other day. I think the first day we came. The seminar. Oh, here. Uh, yes. 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 Um, well, let, let's let see. me know. Let me have your name. What's My your name? name is Chris. Ah, uh, Chris. Yes. Chris, where are you from? I'm from the UK. Oh, from, from the Great UK? Britain. Oh, Great yeah. Britain. Yeah. Wow. My name is Kennedy from Nigeria. Nice to meet you. Nice yes. to meet you. Yes. So, are you, are you into manufacturing of sake or sales? So, I discovered sake while working for a, a Japanese food and drink importer in London. And now I'm a teacher. I actually teach the word, uh, the Wine, Spirits and Education Trust sake course in Tokyo. Really? Yeah. Sake so I, course? That's right. Yeah. So I teach people how to taste it, okay. understand how the breweries make it, because a lot of work goes into making sake. It's a lot more about production than, say, something like wine or, or beer is. Perhaps it's closer to beer than wine. Um, and, you know, this, it's so profound. It's very subtle, but it's also really profound. And there's so much diversity. You know, many people, when they think of sake, maybe they think of something that's quite dry and yes. do you, what do you what do you think maybe, maybe people think it's a spirit but it's not, <laughs> it's, it, not it's, it's not, not. It's no no the highest alcohol level is probably around 15 or 16 normally it's a bit higher than wine but you know it's something you drink in a wine glass sip it sip it don't you know down it and, and savor it wow uh, okay do you have uh, some of the sake uh, brews in, uh, in in great britain Your factories? that's a fantastic question and actually we do i'm really delighted to say we have two no three breweries in great britain yeah, one of the breweries is actually run by a Japanese uh, beer company in, in, in Osaka, uh, who also makes sake as well. What's the name of the company? It's called Dojima. Ah, Dojima. Yeah. I think I have of yes, that. and so they, they bought out a 75-acre um, land, basically, in Cambridge, in, in the UK, <laughs> oh, really? an old abbey house, and they built a brewery. They built a, a sake brewery. Place. That's right. And they found really good water underground, you know, coming from a natural kind of like glacier, old yeah, kind of glacier yeah, thing. Yeah, yes, yes. And I've tried their sake, and it's amazing. It's, it would rival the sake here in Japan, but it's very different at the same time. It's very ah, unique, oh, really? you know. Yeah, because I think there's some of the British water in there. Yeah. And I mean that in a good way. I think, you know, British water, it gets a bit of a rap, bad rap, but actually, okay. Okay. it's good, you well, know. Okay, for instance, in hmm. Japan, you know, the sake is, uh, they, they are what is the, the produced through rice or that's something? right really it's just rice, rice, rice. then you have um, you have the water the, you know yes. I mean sake in the bottle is about 80 percent water so what right? kind of rice do they use is it that's Japanese a, rice or a British one it so in Japan the rule is that you could only use uh, Japanese rice yeah but there's also a technical reason for that as well when they actually when they polish the rice to remove some of like the outer layers of the rice yes. it's very hard to polish the other types of rice, like long grain or, oh, okay, or yes, medium like grain. Long, or long grain, right? And it's also difficult to use those in the actual production as well. So generally, they use sticky, uh, short grain rice. Um, and um, actually, it's a great question because they do use eating rice to make sake. So ordinary eating rice, like uh, maybe I, you've heard of koshi hikari, yeah, yeah. but they do also have a special type of rice. Okay, for sake. For sake, which they cultivate specifically for you know, brewing what's the sake. Name of that? It's called in Japanese. It's called shuzo kotekimai, which shuzo, in English shuzo kotekimai. shuzo kotekimai, which would translate to rice, which is very suitable for for brewing. For, for the brewing. Yeah, which we for, call brewing, long, brewing rice. How long have you been here? Because your accent in France is fantastic. Yeah, a lot of people can't work out where I'm <laughs> from because my accent is very kind of diluted, you know, to begin with. Um, I'm actually so I've been in Japan now about nine years. Okay. I came in 2014, okay. but bear in mind, I'd, I'd visited Japan before. Okay. I studied Japanese at university in, in the UK for about five years. So I could already speak Japanese before I discovered sake. Oh, yeah. Really? And when, when I went, the, I mean, my discovery with sake was a, a eureka moment because I had had quite a bad impression about sake. I'd been told things and I'd, I'd tasted sake in the UK. Okay. And some of the sake that was being sold in the UK was, was not, let's just let's say it's not so good. And you know, maybe it wasn't sake. Yes. And so I had this bad impression, but then this sake brewer, or one of the sake brewers that we were you know, selling their products, okay, yes. they came to London, they did this study session at my company, and they wooed me. Just amazing. Everything I loved about Japan, I so realized- you have a, a sake, uh, you know, you know, distributing company in, in London? No, I worked for a distribution ah, company okay, in London, okay, yeah, okay. Um, for about four years. 
And then I thought, right, I want to learn more about sake. And, you know, the only way to do that is to come to Japan. So I came to Japan. I worked for a sake brewery here for a year as their sales rep in Tokyo. Okay. And right now, I mean, the best thing I realized the best thing I could do is just to go freelance and just do all kinds of different sake related work. And I teach the sake course in Tokyo as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. As you can understand, uh, sake is not really popular in Africa yet. I, I know, but there is some popularity though, because I yeah, really, the what? brewery that introduced me to sake, Nambu Bijin, yeah. they're called, yes. up in Iwate Prefecture in the north, yes. they posted some videos on Facebook of them in Africa yeah. promoting sake in Africa. Yes, I saw, I think I watched that video, we got mm. a lot of viewers. Yeah. They were giving them sake to test and yeah. uh, tell them the reactions. Yeah. That's right, yeah, yeah. Yes, it, it, it is that at that point level, yes. Right. But cannot say is granted in Africa yet, particularly right. in bigger countries like Nigeria, Ghana, yeah. Cameroon, and other yeah. ones. So what are the efforts of the sake companies? I mean, to, to promote in Africa? To promote in Africa. I am not sure, I'll be honest with you, but yes. I, 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 am seeing, I am seeing it being like, you know, on the, on the radar. Okay. They're thinking about Africa and they're realizing maybe, maybe you have the cuisine, which is good for pairing with sake, because I'll be honest with you, I haven't really tried pairing African cuisine with sake, but what I will say yeah. is I've yet to find a cuisine which doesn't pair with sake. <laughs> Pretty much every cuisine will pair with sake. And yes. I think sake is easier to pair with food than wine. Yes, because I, we are not connected from Africa and the world. Right. We promote everything, you know, good from Japan to right. Africa. And then from Africa to Japan. Right. So that people will have a first-hand information, clear yeah. knowledge yeah. about what is happening in Africa, what kind of food do they have. Yeah. And to be honest with you, we're not connected for Africa. We have invested in different areas. We have our online shop. Yeah where we, you know, introduce African right. cuisines, African things. Yeah. We've even gone to the extent of, uh, you know, producing African food, Reto Shokuhin. Right. Yes, which is on sales on our online yeah. store. And uh, as a matter of fact, this yeah. evening, uh, you know, Mr. Tamori, you know Tamori? Um, about. Tamori Crab, no? mm -hmm. Yes, our, our African food will feature there this evening on mm -hmm. Asahi Television. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, Tamori, yes. Yes, yes. Tamori. Yes. He's very famous in Japan. Yeah, he's so. he's the guy with the glass, the sunglasses, yeah, exactly. right? Exactly. He's he's super famous. Yes. He had a program here. I like was I was with him uh, last oh, month. Oh, wow, you met Tamori. Tamori. Yes, yes, yes. So I think there is every good need. We work on, you know, promoting sake more. Yeah. Because the consumption level in Africa, yeah, particularly yeah. Nigeria, is very high. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Young people, once they like it. Yeah. The biggest place you can sell it is in Africa. Right. Yes. Really so I, I think you, you should take the advantage yeah, of agree. introducing them to your company yeah. so that they can now look, you know, through promoting sake to Africa, through Navconess for Africa. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, I would love, you know, a sake to become popular in Africa. And there are loads of other countries where it's still not, you know, even made a, you know, a splash, you know, even a, or even a ripple. You know, and, and most countries, to be honest with you, they still have a very small sake consumption. It's very niche extremely niche yes. and there are a lot of reasons for that i mean the first reason i think is that it's so, becomes so expensive once you export it oh, right so we're soon once it reaches the other side yes. there are so many taxes and fuel duties and you know things being yes. put on yes. that it's about four or five times the price in the uk it's about 4.5 four times the price maybe that it would be in japan yeah, but it's important uh, goods I mean, we, yeah. we buy hennessy we buy yeah. you know cognacs we buy yeah. So, so you, you need campaign. to, if you're going to sell something that expensive, yes. you need to be able to communicate its value, right? Exactly. And that's where we're struggling a little bit because, yeah. like I said, sake is all about the production, and yeah. it, I think it's a bit of a, a bit of a chore to ask that, like the average person, to suddenly, fully understand how sake is produced. So yeah. we have to find other ways to kind of sell exactly. its value. Exactly. So one one area that we're really focusing on is aging, sake. So, you know, aging is is not a new thing, yeah. but it's kind of been revived in Japan. Yes, and, and age, yes. sake has a huge Kur potential. Kuramoto, Kuramoto, they call them? Yes, Kuramoto, yeah, yes, that's right. They, yeah. you know, the, the number of the, the real people that are doing that aging, actually. That's right. So, and they are really struggling to have a that's younger right. generation getting into yeah. it. And yeah. I think you're, 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 you're getting involved in the whole thing. I love it. I mean, I fell in love with it. You know, that brewery at Namba Virgin, yeah. you've seen him on the video. Yes. He's a very charismatic guy. Mr. Yes. Kuji, very charismatic. Yes. I think he would woo anyone into sake. <laughs> you know, it was love at first sip or first sight. You know, when I, when I heard his story, you know, I fell in love with the story. Okay. All the Japanese culture, all the history, everything I loved about Japan, it was in his story. Okay. I was like, wow, sake is really connected to all this. 
And I was like, well, okay, I'm going to try it. <laughs> I'm going to put my, my kind of, you know, my bad image, I'm going to put a negative image to one side. Yes. I'm going to try this. And if it tastes okay, you know, maybe I could get into this sake thing. And of course, as luck would have it, yeah. as fate would have it, it was the most amazing sake I ever tasted. And it was, it blew me away. Yeah. Very wonderful. To be honest, uh, of course, the coronavirus have uh, distorted a lot of things, a lot of yeah. visitors yeah. that's supposed to cloud the, the media center. Yeah. But notwithstanding, I, I was so impressed. The very day we came here, I think that was on the 20th. Yeah. The first set of uh, companies that were allowed to come and tour the, the 20th, center right? on yeah. the 20th yeah. of this month. Yeah. 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 Yes. Your explanation was flawless. Oh, and I was like, ah. I've lived here for 28 years. How could this guy know Sake more than I do? <laughs> <laughs> but I also understand it's a bar of interest. <laughs> it's very neat. It's very neat. Yes. I, mean, I mean, how many people in the UK, like average people, yes. really know that much about wine? Right? Because yes, I knew absolutely. pretty much nothing about wine. <laughs> I studied the WSCT, the, the Wine Spirits Education. Yes, just, yes. I studied their wine course as well. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I learned about wine. And then I realized how much I didn't know about wine <laughs> to begin with. I'm sure it's the same for Sake, you know? But, it, but, they, but actually, to enjoy sake, you don't need to know that much. Oh, really? No, you really don't. Just a few basic things. Okay. Yeah, like labels and what it says on the label. What is actually and the difference between uh, sake, uh, sake and uh, shochu? Shochu is from... Uh, Biggest difference, one is distilled, that's shochu. Oh, yeah, distilled. Yeah. Okay. Other one isn't. In fact, when they make shochu, they pretty much make sake to begin with. And then they distill it. Sake is fermented, I think. That's right. Yeah, okay. So you have a fermentation mash. Yes. Just yeah, like with sake. I was watch on the television when they are. Yeah, you it's know. hard work. Really <laughs> hard work. Because it just looks like they're stirring. But yeah. no, what they're actually doing is they're, they're, they're folding the mixture because the, the top and the bottom are a bit kind of dis disparate, you know, disparate. So they're trying to mix it together. And the, like on the first days of sake making, it's really heavy. So you're actually pulling a really heavy, yeah, like, you know, yeah. I've tried it and, you know, after about 10 minutes, it's backbreaking work. Oh, really? Really, yeah. <laughs> and it's dangerous work as well, you know, you're, you're standing over the tank and, and uh, you know. And it's just like you're taking care of a, a little baby. Yeah. Because, oh, that's fantastic. And I, I love, you know, and many brewers say that, you know, it's like looking after a baby, a child. A child yeah, the process you know, is Especially the, um, the, the koji. Okay, yeah, yeah, Koji making, eh? I mean, they, they have to get up in the middle of the night and go and see, you know, if things are right with it, you know? So it's just like yeah, looking so after a small process, child. The process of uh, yeah, making the sake, eh? this is like making sake, and then you have the distillation as well. Okay, the, the, the last one is the fermentation? Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, this is sake, isn't it? So this is making sake, uh -huh. and then, yes, you have um, preparing the rice, so polishing, polishing or yeah. milling away the, the outer layers of the yes, rice. Yes, yes. They wash and soak the rice, steam it, make the koji. Some of the rice you actually put in the, ma the tank yeah. as is. Okay. And some of the rice you sprinkle some um, fungus on. Yes. And this fungus will then put enzymes uh, inside I the rice. And it's, it basically to, it on, to, to change the starch and the starch, sugar. Yes, yeah. yes. Then you make the koji, right? Which becomes like its own thing. So you have steamed rice with a mold on top. Okay. And then you create like a kind of a mini fermentation. fermentation yeah, to start, you know, it's not bubbling like... Well, you know, it's to give the yeast a bit of space to grow, oh. right? Because if you just throw everything in a big tank, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like a campfire analogy, yes. right? Yes. You throw all the big logs on top first. You put the fire out, exactly. right? Yes. So you need to give the yeast a bit of space to grow, oh, right? And yeah. keep the bad bacteria away, oh. right? So you create this... You know when you make sourdough bread? Yeah, exactly. Exactly the same. Yeast exactly and, you know, the same. Making powders and... Yeah. yeah. And then you add this to a bigger tank. Okay. Yes. You add more rice, you add more koji, you add more water, and over four days, you build the fermentation, and then you ferment for about a further 28 days, depending on the style of sake that you, you're brewing. Okay. And then you have, because sake is normally clear, right? Okay. So in order to, like, the, the word for, like, sake as we know it, the clear stuff in the glass, is seishu in Japan. Okay. Yeah, or there is a GI, if it's made in yes, Japan. Uh, seishu is just all sake, ah, basically, ah, right? okay, okay. The rule is that you have to press the sake. If you don't press the sake, it's called doburoku, which is a homebrew sake. It's illegal now in Japan, actually. Oh, okay. some, some places have licenses to make it. It looks, like, it looks like cloudy sake, but it's like it's not like a liquid. I mean, it doesn't, when you move the glass, it doesn't move. It's like a yogurt, almost. But doburoku is also becoming quite popular again, as well. Doboroku is the roots of sake. Oh, really? What, what, what sake became. 
right? Uh, sorry, what sake was before it became before sashi? It became, yes, yeah. exactly. So, as long as you press the sake, that's the rule. As long as you press the sake, and it doesn't matter, like whether you press the sake completely or just a little bit. As long as you press the sake, yeah. right, you can call it seishu, right, okay. or like clear sake, basically. Mm, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. seishu. Which includes cloudy sake. That's the confusing bit, right? <laughs> so, so when you come across cloudy sake, it is pressed. It is filtered. Okay, okay. It's just not filtered completely. They they use a. Um, a mesh with bigger holes in it, mm -hmm. so some of the solids go through. Go, go through. And it, it's, excuse the pun, but it's a little bit of a loophole in the law. Okay. They allow it, okay, allow because it. you are pressing, you're just not pressing it completely. Uh, right. If you don't press it completely at all, then it's double It seems that a lot of uh, sake manufacturing uh, you know, companies in Japan yeah. have many brands. Yeah. So, of course, all of them are sake. Which yes. of the brands do you uh, work for? Or do you press so for? I I worked for uh, Tatenokawa ah, in ta Yamagata Prefecture. Ah, Tatenokawa. Tatenokawa. Tatenokawa in Yamagata Prefecture. Yes. Okay. And they're quite special because they decided to only make Jumai Daiginjo sake. They don't make anything else, just Jumai Daiginjo. Okay, they specialize and they, they concentrate just, on that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that, that, that makes it special. That's right. So hope NAF Connects for Africa and the world will definitely work one day to promote sake in Africa yeah. with, with uh, your, your company. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't work for any one company in particular, yeah. but I'm involved with lots of different breweries. Yeah, I, you yeah, know, yeah, I yeah. often do consulting work and, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, because they, a lot of breweries really, they, they're not, you know, as a, as a trade, as an industry, yeah. you know, they're not really, they don't have the marketing expertise. Exactly. Right exactly. to to go out into the world and, yes. and pr promote their products. A lot of these younger brewers, they actually go to university and they study marketing and they study business, <laughs> right? But they don't have those skills to begin with, yes. right? And that. and it's a it's a it's very much a trade, you know. It's to make a living. It's it's yeah. not to make a profit even. Most most sake in Japan, I mean, it doesn't. It just it barely breaks even, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now when you're going out into the world and you're trying to promote sake, you need a different skill set. You need a different mindset. Exactly. You need to understand, you know. Who to target? Exactly. Like, who do you target your products to? Exactly. And that kind of know-how and that kind of you know experience, uh, people like myself have, and they can help the brewers. But some of these brewers, they're doing the homework, you know, and they're they're working out. Of course, you you you. I'm sure you are an asset to that company. Yeah. Um, Nafconess for Africa is in alliance yeah. with the Africa Trade Center, right? And uh, as well as the African Ecowas delegation here in Japan. Actually, we were supposed to have a, a delegation from West Africa. Yes, coming to Japan to you know on a, on, on a business meeting with the Japan counterparts, but because of the Corona, it was cancelled. So I will report back to the Africa Trade Center, which I'm a partner with. Any other time we have a big, a huge yeah. event, then we can collaborate in introducing this to yeah, yeah, yeah. to them so that they understand how it works and what is this uh, rice yeah. sake. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, are we can delve into the culture a little bit as well. Like, exactly. You exactly. Have like these, you know, the barrel. Exactly. Rig. We can uh, do the barrel. Uh, exactly. Rig. Yes. Yes. A lot of fun. Yes. A lot of fun. Definitely. We, yeah. we, we, we will definitely do that. I'm in alliance with Upper Hotel Group. Okay. Yes, I signed. Yeah. I signed a partnership, a strategic partnership agreement with them. Yeah. To collaborate. I've in stayed Africa. in more Upper Hotels. Than Thank you very much for Japanese staying in. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for <laughs> staying in Upper Hotel. Yeah. We really to thank you for giving us your time this no, time. No, not at all. Yeah, definitely. Oh, we would love to share our card with you if you have a business credit. Don't have your card me today. Okay. What I can do is yeah. Point I will be here towards... tomorrow again. Oh, let me give you a card yes, tomorrow. Yes, yeah, because I'll I'm coming to uh, document with Miss Universe Japan tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so I'm not, I'm not here tomorrow. Okay. So what I'll do is I will. Um, well, if I can get your card, I'll yes, email yeah. you. I definitely. Uh, I'll give you my credit. I I also present on probably the world's first and still really only truly focused podcast about sake shochu and awamori okay. um called sake on air, oh, sake on air. yes okay. we're on like 80 episodes now and i often i present on that podcast and would like a lot of africans to come on delegation I yeah on delegation. yeah that's sake oh absolutely yes, yes. and i'd like to know from them like you know what what type of sake would go well with African? Yeah, exactly. Food? With African yeah. cuisine and everything. Interested to know. Exactly. Do you, have, do you have a lot of rice in Africa? Yeah, we do. We do. Oh, it's going to be a natural. Yeah, we do have our own brands, actually. Yeah. So, but wouldn't know if it would suit the making of sake. Or not. Yeah. Maybe you can make sake with African rice. It's possible. Oh, I think it's definitely possible. <laughs> yeah. Very possible. Very possible. Oh, okay, I will bring my card later. Thank you very okay. much for your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet We're you. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.